Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1,311. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook, Excel Magic Trick 1,307 to 1,311 and follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. We want to be able to select a particular item number. If I select this one here, instantly I want to see all of the items associated with that item number and the total. So you can see right now we have fast catch listed there. And then the next one, quad, listed there. So all of them. And then the total for all of those items from this column. All right, I'm going to click on the sheet 1311. Here's the same data set, and we want to get all of the items and then the total sales number for this item number. First thing I need to do is use count ifs to count from the item number column comma, how many of these item numbers we have. And so when I hit Enter, we have four of them. Now, once we determine that we have four of these item numbers, that means we need Sunshine, Bellin, Tri, Fly, Quad, and then the numbers. The problem is we're looking up something. And any time we have duplicates like this, the lookup functions are just not built to do this. So what we really need is we're actually going to use the index function and we need to know that Sunshine is in the relative position 2, Bellin's in the fifth, TriFly's in whatever that one is, and Quad is in the very last one. So we actually, in the formula, have to generate these relative positions. So we're going to start with that formula element. I'm going to use the row function. And in the reference argument, I'm just going to highlight every single item which is a function argument array operation. So of course, if I highlight row and F9 to evaluate this, it gives me the actual row numbers, 2 to 17. That's not what I want. I actually want 1 to 16, Control-Z. So now I'm going to subtract a single cell. And I actually learned this from Bill Sizzes. If we have a proper data set, we can simply click on the field name at the top. All this does for this row right here is it will say I'm in row 1. So 2 minus 1, of course, is 1. If I were to highlight this whole little bit right here in F9, that's an array of relative positions. Now, we need to filter out. We're only interested in 2, 5, and the other two that represent our items. So now I'm going to close parentheses and divide by another array calculation. And say, hey, how many of you in here are equal to this? Now, I actually forgot to lock all these because we're going to copy these down. So I'm going to highlight F4, F4. Watch this. I'm going to highlight all these in F4. All right, so that'll give me a series of trues and falses in the denominator. So when I evaluate this entire thing with F9, divide by zeros will filter out all the relative positions we don't want. There's our 2, our 5, our 13, and our 16. Now, as I copy this formula down, I need to pull out the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest, and so on, Control-Z. So I'm going to use the aggregate function. And in the very first argument, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to use small, so function number 15, comma. And I need to ignore the divide by 0. So I use 6 in the options argument, comma, array. That's that whole thing right there with our relative positions, comma. And then for k, I need a formula element right here that'll say 1, 2, 3, 4 as I copy down. So I use rows. And I'm sitting in F8. So I'm going to say F dollar sign 8 colon F8. This is an expandable range. How many rows are there from 8 to 8? One. But that one is locked. This one is not. So as it goes down, it will expand. And rows will give us 2, 3, 4, and so on. So now I can close parentheses. That Rows for K will do its job. Control Enter. Looks like I have number formatting there, but I won't worry about that. I'm going to copy this down. And there it is, relative position 2, 5, 13, and 16. Now we can throw that into the index function. So I'm going to come to the beginning, index. And the array, those are the items we're trying to look up. F4 to lock it, comma. And there it is, row number is that output from aggregate. Close parentheses, Control-Enter. 
double click and send it down. Now we need to do two things. We need to get rid of the num errors and right in 4 plus 1, we need the total. So I'm going to hit F2, and I'm going to have to string two ifs. So if, and I already have part of what I want, this rows. So in the if logical test, I'm going to say when the number incrementer is less than or equal to 4, and I'm going to have to hit F4. If that's true, comma, then the value of true is our lookup formula. So I come to the end, comma. Otherwise, there's still two conditions left, so I have to put another if. If, and I'm going to say, copy that rows, if rows is exactly equal to this count of 4, F4 plus 1. Then what do I want? Comma. I want some ifs. Some range. That's all of these values right here. F4. Comma. Criteria range, all of these items. F4, comma. And finally, the criteria is, hey, this item number, F4 to lock it. So there's our sum ifs. I'm going to close this off. That is sitting in value if true. That will work fine, comma. Otherwise, for the num arrow, we want double quote, double quote, which is a zero length text string, which will show nothing. Close parentheses. And by the way, this array formula doesn't require Control-Shift-Enter because, yes, we do have a bunch of array calculations sitting in aggregate. But aggregate array argument is programmed to handle those without Control-Shift-Enter. Come to the end, and I need one more parentheses. Control-Enter, double-click, and send it down. That is an amazing formula. Now if I change the item number, boom, there it is, all of the items and the total. All right, we'll see you next trip.